you see all this weird looking stuff sign in? Man, let me call him. But anyway, I'm delayed by five minutes because I'm videotaping this asshole <laughs> telling me I need to show ID. I'm like, man, you don't have the right to ask me for identification. <laughs> well, the alarm is going off. Well, I didn't do it. Uh, he's doing some stuff, so let's okay. Call him. What's going on, my people? As soon as the radio show goes live, we are about, we're going to get started. Hey, Renita, I need to get you on the show. We got to turn about fair play. What's going on, Felicity? What's going on, Debs, County Surveyor? What's happening hey, with you? We're about to do, uh, do our show here, just waiting on the engineer to get us all set up for the radio, as, the radio side of the show. I think I have some good stuff we're going to talk about today. It's just going to be all me doing my show tonight. So just give me just one second here. I see something normal now. A is looking good. Okay, well, she's ready. I'm about to go. come with it, Lily. Don't even worry. I'm about to come with it. All right, hold on. Okay. You are on the air. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Thank you again for tuning in to Turn Left. I am your host, Indiana's own Dana Black. Um, if you uh, are in, at home listening and you want to see uh, my facial expressions, because sometimes they're quite hilarious. Uh, feel free to follow me on Facebook, and I've got a Facebook Live going on. Shout out to RadioNext.tv for hosting this show for us. Um, this show is all about politics. This show is about how policy and the politicians that we elect impact our lives. I wanted to talk just a little bit about last week's show when we talked about sickle cell and all the initiatives that they have going on. Don't think that, you know, um, uh, one specific um, illness or one specific uh, uh, type of problem that we see in our community is, is all I'm going to focus on. Um, I had someone reach out to me last week. They want to come on and talk about uh, mental health issues and how that relates to the health care system, but we can also include that into our mass incarceration conversation. So we, we've got a lot of good things that we want to talk about, but always consider um, maybe even uh, volunteering some of your time to some of these organizations that we talk about. I w uh, I'm excited because uh, Brothers United reached out to me today um, wanting to come on the show. I'm excited about having these guys on here because they have a plan. I'm not going to divulge it all now because I want you guys to hear about it, but they have a nationally recognized uh, organization and a plan to look out for folks, um, especially those in the minority communities that are suffering with and living with, I should say, um, HIV and AIDS and, and all of what that looks like. Um, so, as you know, um, well, did everybody have a good weekend? Did everybody enjoy their three-day weekend? I know I did. Um, sh a shout out to, to unions for making sure that we had three-day weekends <laughs> for Memorial Day and get holiday pay at the same time. Thank you very much. Shout out to all of our service members who, you know, so um, valiantly uh, uh, give of themselves and of their families to serve our country so that we can have shows where we can argue about things on the right and the left. Thank you. Thank you for fighting for us. Thank you for sacrificing. Because I'm going to tell you, I, I can't do it. There's no way I could have been in the military. I, I, I tried ROTC in high school, and that was about all I could get to um, because all that yelling at me just wasn't going to work. I'm not one of those uh, those young ladies that could have uh, handled you. I, I was a neck roller. Uh, yeah, I was a neck roller in my teens. And so all that yelling at me, dropping, give me 20, wasn't going to work for me. But um, because I recognize the sacrifices, I want to give a shout out to all of our veterans and all of our active duty service folks and all of the branches who give of us so that we can sit around and moan and groan about what we don't do and do not like. Because that's, that's basically what it is, is the right to be who we are. Um, as you know, I'm going to talk about what's coming up, upcoming events, because there's a lot of stuff on the plate. I want to make sure that I 
give you guys the right information about the precinct training that is coming up in Marion County. Uh, Kate Sweeney Bell, who is the Democrat, uh, ch the chair for the uh, Marion County Democratic Party, um, that she is super, super active um, in, in Marion County right now. Her and her team did not waste any time getting things in order, getting things in place, and making things happen. So. We have, uh, if I'm not mistaken, and she mentioned it when she came on the show, about 600 precinct seats, and uh, precinct chair and vice chair seats open. Um, if you want to get involved and understand what it is to be a precinct committee person or a vice precinct committee person, I am a precinct committee person for Lawrence 14. This is a good training for you. Um, they're offering it up on two different dates, on June 3rd, which is this coming Saturday, and June 17th. Now, I'll be honest, I'm going to end up missing both of these trainings, so hopefully I'll be able to catch one in another county or someplace else um, because I could always use a brush up on um, tactics and, and, and things that we can do to engage our communities better. But uh, on June 3rd um, uh, and on June 17th at the Julia Carson Government Center, um, the training is designed for beginners and experts from basics of knocking doors and best practice to community building and data-driven targeting. Um, lunch will be served and they will have speakers in explaining their section or their portion of the program. Uh, so this thing is from, uh, if I'm not mis I did not put the time down. Oh, uh, so at nine o'clock, I do believe. How could I not do that? Nine o'clock and I will make sure I verify. I'll go online and make sure I get that information for you. But. If you are considered, a, if you if you really just want to dip your toes in uh, of what it is to be involved in local politics, because all politics are local when you think about it, right? Everything um, that affects your community um, it, it, it politically happens at a local level, and you really can't get any more local than a precinct committee person, and they are so valuable. I mean, if you really think about it, you know, Indianapolis alone has close to 900,000 residents and probably about, what, 600,000 of those are of voting age. You know, there's no way a county chair by herself or by himself could go out and reach out to all these constituents and make sure that they are connected into the system. Precinct committee folks, vice precinct committee folks, and war chairs help that grassroots down at the bottom and making sure that we're, you know, doing all the, the I, I'm just going to call it what it is, the dirty work, to make sure that voters know that we're out here. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, thanks, Felicity. Felicity says that she thinks it's 10 to 2, so thank you for looking out. Um, but it's a Julia Carson Center. I think if you really want to, you should get involved. Now, but it is important that you guys RSVP because they are serving lunch. Now, you don't want them to spend too much money and you don't show up. So if you are really interested, or you don't want to be hungry because they ran out of food, <laughs> right? So if you are interested, please, 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 RSVP to T O. T T E N at IndieDemocrats.com. I'll repeat that. R S V P to T O T T E N at IndieDemocrats.com. Uh, it'll be a great training session. I'm excited about it because of all the work they've already put into it, the enthusiasm they're showing for, hey, let's get out here and make sure we take care of our people and they know what to do and know how to do it the right way. These are the things that are important uh, to, to, to flip seats because if you know my mantra right now, I got two hashtags. One is team action and one is flip some seats because that's what we're trying to do. All right. Next up uh, on Monday, June 5th. Oh, I'm going to give a shout out to my nephew. Sam Black. I usually don't do this. Y'all know I don't do this, but he graduates from Warren Central High School on June 5th. I'm excited about my baby, my oldest, my oldest nephew. Um, he's a beautiful, beautiful young man. His, his heart is, is good. And he cute. I'm just going to lie. My nephew look good. Um, he has his own style and his own way of doing things. I am so proud of him. He'll be graduating high school on June 5th, so I won't be attending any events on June 5th. I'll be over at uh, Banker's Life. Uh, cheering and rooting and screaming and hollering for my oldest nephew graduating high school. But anyway, um, there is an event going on up in Hammond. So for my region listeners, um, why, we sh why should we care and engage in politics? It's on Monday, June 5th from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Um, on the Purdue University Northwest Hammond campus, Alumni Hall, third floor. Um, this is going to be hosted by Lakeshore Public Radio, and this is also a League of Women Voters event. So 
Listen, this is not a partisan event. This is going to be a, 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 a bipartisan event. Um, folks that will be there that are expected to be on this panel, um, the Lake County Republican chair uh, is Dan uh, Dernok, please forgive me if I did not pronounce that correctly. The Democratic Party Chair, James uh, Weezer, and Libertarian Party Chair, Chuck Pullen. So they've got, you know, three parties there, but if you're in the Hammond area uh, and you want to understand why you should get involved, here are, here are reasons. You don't have to be a Democrat, you don't have to be a Republican, but you can hear all the sides of why you want to get involved and do this. This is up in Hammond. So um, the folks in the region, y'all know I love y'all up there. I'm always going to be shouting y'all out. Um, check it out. Monday, 5 to 6, Purdue University, 2233 East 173rd Street, Hammond, Indiana, the Alumni Hall, third floor. Check it out. I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, okay, June 6th. I think I've mentioned this before. Um, Indivisible Indianapolis is having their monthly meeting at the uh, MCL on 20 at 2370 East, 8, or I'm sorry, West 86th Street. On It's basically 86th and Township Line Road. Um, I am their guest speaker for that night. I'm excited about it. Again, you know me as the, as the deputy chair. It's all about engagement. I'm looking forward to talking to folks over to Indivisible Indianapolis. I want to hear what they're talking about. I want to understand what their desires and goals are. I'm going to share my story, yes, but I'm also going to be listening so I can take stuff back to John Zodi and we can uh, get some things done. Um, this one's off the uh, beaten path, and I'm glad I found it. Um, because one of the things that I try to do is make sure that I'm as, as inclusive as I possibly can. So some of the, what I do is I usually search um, for what events are going on around the state, not just in the local area, but around the state. But I was excited to find um, a trans pride social um, June 6th from 7 to 10 p.m. Now, it's on a Thursday, so I don't think that I will be able to... What, is that, that's Tuesday. I'm sorry, Tuesday, so I don't know if I'll be able to make it. But if you know where Indy Fringe is, 719 East St. Clair, um, it's just going to be a, a really good way to connect with folks. Um, a, a, a trans pride social network, you, you know, always, you know, trans folks or their allies or, you know, just connecting with people, good people, regardless. Go check that out. I think that'll be fun. I, I think it'll be a nice little fun event. Um, Thursday, June 8th, um, if you are uh, in Noblesville, and I think I'm actually going to try to make this event after my radio show, so I may catch the last hour or so, maybe even half hour, but uh, Representative Sue Arrington of House District 34 will speak about public office. Um, I think you guys ought to check it out. I, I had a chance to meet with the ladies over at Indiana Women's Political Caucus. Um, they under, This is why I like them. Uh, they understand that not everybody can do everything. They have a they they have a good idea that you know this is this is what our niche needs to be. I like that because some people think that you know some people think they can do everything. Just because you got skills doesn't mean you should do everything. I know there are certain things that I should not do. Pick out paint colors. I should never do that. Pick out curtains. Nope, nope, nope. I should never do that. Rouse up a crowd. I can do that. Those are my things. But um, go talk. This is a good way to, to meet an elected official, um, to talk about things, listen to her, uh, what maybe her plans are um, to move Indiana forward, maybe ask some questions. But these are elected officials. They're our elected officials. We don't have to be hostile and rude, but go up and, and to Noblesville, uh, 1274 Logan Street. It's the Logan Street uh, Sanctuary. Go meet an elected official. Someone that sits in our house district here in the state of Indiana, go meet them. I think it'll be a great, great opportunity. Um, um, and then on June 10th, and I've mentioned this before, um, the Hamilton County Democrats are hosting a candidate training session. This training session is intense and it has some value. So if you're interested in running for office and you're interested in, and maybe even interested in helping a good candidate out and you want to know the ins and outs, you should definitely join them at the uh, Hamilton East Public Library, um, and, and, and I'm telling you, you're going to learn some things. You're going to learn some things. June 10th, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., uh, they're going to teach you how to fill out your paperwork. They're going to teach you, you know, some marketing skills. They're going to teach you about uh, how to use data, things like that. Um, you should definitely get involved. Last night I was over in um, uh, Hendricks County. Um, with uh, Voices for Change, and they have a very similar um, thing going on, and theirs is going to be over um, several weeks where they're going to, you know, 
I was really impressed with what I saw over at Hendricks County. I mean, I was really impressed because not only, uh, and I've actually started to utilize some of the things I've learned. Not only um, did I, did she like say, hey, come and run for office. She makes people a answer, you know, important questions about why you want to run. Um, I, I have that documentation that she shared last night. I am going to utilize it, and I'm hoping that um, uh, the, the individuals that were teaching that class will consider um, hosting some training sessions for the, the Democrat Party. Um, Voices for Change is a, is a, is a nonpartisan organization, and I always respect when people say that they are nonpartisan, but they were so good at what they were doing. What's going on, boss? <laughs> I got to give my shout-out to the boss, man. HB! <laughs> um, but I'm always impressed when, when people have good information um, and they put the work in. And she went to, you know, they went to several different places to compile all this information on training. Uh, I'm hoping that she will come and help us um, with the Democrat Party with some, some call outs and some candidate trainings. Uh, there are some folks that are, that are really involved, you know. Now, one thing about me, um, I, I have a big mouth. I know this, and I know sometimes things come out that probably shouldn't, and I have, as I've gotten older, I have gotten better at knowing where to restrict my mouth. I'm, I'm getting better. I, I still have some issues, um, but I'm getting better. But over the last couple weeks, I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about some things right now that may not make some folks happy, but I think it needs to be said, and uh, ho hopefully some, some will agree with me, and if not, if everybody I say this to f finds fault in what I'm saying, you know, that's it. But I want to talk about, there's still a lot of folks um, that are, are uh, coming to events and reaching out to me on Facebook and reaching out to different organizations with a laundry list of things that went wrong in 2016. Laundry list. I mean, there are, are, are we, you know, the 2016 election has been dissected better than any frog that I dissected in biology class uh, back in the 80s. I mean, we have, we have dissected it. And, and, and a lot of what people are bringing to the table is valid. They are, I mean, the issues that they're talking about and the concerns that they have are incredibly valid. But what drives me nuts is when I say, you know what? <laughs> Can you help us solve some of these problems? Will you help us solve what you see isn't going well? There's no, there's no, and I've said this a gazillion times, there's no way John Zodi could see every issue in Indiana. There's no way that Cordelia Lewis Burks can see every issue in Indiana. That, that's our leadership in the state party, right? That's our chair and our vice chair. There's no way they can see every issue. There's no way at the time that Joel Miller, who was the county chair for Marion County, could see every issue in Marion County. And we need eyes and ears on the streets to tell us what we can't see. Now, you have a choice to bring it to us in a positive way uh, as constructive criticism so that we can grow, or you can just come with a lot of hatred and, mad and be mad for the rest of your life about what you saw didn't go well in 2016. I hear people tell me all the time, you keep, you keep hiring and re bringing back the same people, you know, you, you're going to get the same thing over and over again. Well, I'm going to ask you something. And, and this is not about glorifying me or anything like that. But did you know who I was in 2014? Did you know who I was in 2016 as, as I was running for, for office? No, you didn't. Just like you, I saw a lot of the issues that, that, that I, I thought the, the state party could do better with. And when I had an opportunity to sit down and voice, hey, this is what I see. I came at it from a positive place. But then I also said, I want to be a part of the solution. 
I want to I want to put in work. The energy that I have, the in, the focus that I have, can I can I help? Is there something that I can do to help make the party better? Is there something that I can do to help get people elected? Is there something that I can do? Now, I will listen to all of you wonderful folks who continue to want to complain. But I am no longer just going to listen to you complain. I'm going to actually ask you, are you willing to help us fix it? If you come up with a gazillion excuses about why you can't help us fix it, that's on you. But there's an opportunity for us to fix some things. So I want to read to you today, um, June 1st, John Zodi put out a press release. And it says that the Indiana Democrats are kicking off a program to organize and recruit volunteers across the state more than a year before the 2018 elections. Well, we know we, we've, we've already started this process because we have two new deputy chairs, one of which is a deputy chair for engagement. I'm out there. I'm doing my thing. But, but this lets you know that there is a, a concerted effort by the state party to be more involved and more active. Right. There's a lot of other stuff in here, but it, but it's called Resistance Summer. OK, it's called Resistance Summer and it's a, it's a nationwide uh, Democratic Party program initiative designed to bolster state parties and invest in local organizations, uh, organizing projects over the summer. So not only is the Indiana Democrat Party investing time and energy in recruiting candidates and recruiting volunteers, the, the, the DNC is making this a, a, a national thing. And everybody in the state of Indiana has the opportunity to be involved. Everybody. Um, so the Indiana Democratic Party will work with local party organizations and other stakeholders across the state to hold events to recruit volunteers, register voters, inform Hoosiers about the issues and what's at stake. This is the plan. Here it is, press release, here is the plans, and it's called Resistance Summer. And here's the great thing about it. There are no restrictions on who can sign up. I don't see any age restrictions. So you can be 12 or 112. It doesn't say that there is a gender restriction. You know, I believe gender is fluid. It's not binary. It doesn't say uh, uh, sexual preference. It doesn't say religious affiliation. It doesn't say race, culture, or creed. It says anybody who wants to get involved with moving Indiana forward can get involved. You don't have to sit around and wait for somebody to ask you. It's telling you, please, come and help us. And this is how you do it. You go to I-N-D-E-M-S, indems.org, and then slash join. You can join. Anybody can be a part of the resistance. And you can work with the state party. Now, listen, if you already have an organization that's working on recruiting candidates and you have an organization that's working on recruiting, uh, uh, registering voters, do your thing. I love it. Do your thing. But for me, and it's interesting because I'm watching, like, <laughs> the number of people drop off my Facebook Live because I really did. I, I mean, this is – I'm not one to hurt people's feelings because that's not really my thing. I, I really disdain hurting people's feelings and calling people out just for the sake of hurting feelings, and I hope I haven't hurt any feelings. But my thing is this. If you want to get involved, get involved. If you want to sit around and moan and groan about it, sit around and moan and groan about it. But know if you come to me, if you come to Indiana's own Dana Black about what went wrong in 2016, my question is, wow, this is what I'm going to say to you. Wow, you have some amazing insight. And it sounds like you are very knowledgeable. Are you willing to come help us? Will you help us improve the state party? Uh, this is a shout out, call out to everybody. indems.org slash join. Tell them Dana Black sent you. I really didn't, but just tell them I did anyway. Because you know what? We can be the force for change that we desire to be, 
All we got to do is act. Join hashtag team action. Join INDEMS. Join flip, hashtag flip some seats. Now, I done gave you the spiel about how you can get involved, but let me tell you why you should get involved. So, the Trump budget came out again this week, and it actually saddens me. Uh, it, it does, I don't, I, you know, I used to just get angry. <laughs> I used to just get angry. Because, like, you know, how could you do this? How could you do this? How could you do this? But it really does sad me because it's not like he's doing anything that, you know, for the most part, Democrats understood the direction that Republicans were going to go into. You know, the fact that they call programs that you've paid into for the entirety of your life, your working life, like Social Security, an entitlement program. You know, you know what that suggests? That you don't deserve it. You pay into Social Security. Yes, you're, you're paying into Social Security that pays for elderly folks now, but the, the next generation, when they start paying into Social Security, they'll be paying for you. That's why they call it Social Security. And not everybody has the financial wherewithal to understand how to invest money properly. And how many times have we seen people who come into vast amounts of wealth and entrust financial gurus with their money only to be robbed blind. Not everybody knows this stuff. Not everybody understands how the markets work. But the Social Security is, is our safety net. Medicaid and Medicare are our safety nets. They are not entitlements. <laughs> Working class folks really don't know what entitlements are when you really think about it. What are we entitled to? We're not entitled to a job, especially in Indiana, because this is a, a, a right to work state. You ain't entitled to a job. <laughs> and the way Betsy DeVos is going about business, you are not entitled to a quality education if you go to public schools. And you sure as heck ain't entitled to health care because they're trying to slash and dash that up right now. So it really bothers me when they call, you know, our social safety net so that people are not, so that people are not just completely and totally destitute for issues or concerns that, that, are, that, that, that were out of their control. Right? So, I mean, I wish... I mean, you know, Mitt Romney and Donald Trump, their parents were able to give them, you know, millions of dollars to start their businesses. Donald Trump screwed his money over so many times. How many times he filed for bankruptcy? Y'all can look that up. Google it. Four, five, seven. Warren Buffett never filed for bankruptcy. You ever notice that? There's a difference between a good businessman and a not-so-good businessman. So I started going through some of the um, cuts because... At first, I was, I was only looking at the cuts. I only looked at, you know, how much money would be taken from this and how much money would be taken from that. And there is some, there is some um, validity in looking at those things. Like, for example, you know, $627 billion cut from Medicaid. And, I mean, gosh, $194 billion cut from food stamps. I, I want to I want to stop right there for just a minute. Food stamps. There seems to be a, a, a stigma around people wanting to make sure that they can eat. You know, eating is not something. Eating is not like going on a cruise. Eating is not like uh, having an having alcohol, smoking cigarettes. Eating is not like. I want to get my kids all the most fantastic toys on their birthdays and, and Christmases. Eating is something that you must do in order to survive on this planet. You have to eat. If you do not eat, guess what? You will die. I'm not trying to scare anybody. That's just science. You starve. You can starve to death. You, I, unfortunately, I've seen it happen. I'm not going to go into details, but I see it, I seen it happen to somebody that was close to me, starving to death because she had a tumor. 
and food couldn't get through. She starved to death. $194 billion cuts in food stamps. Now, if you are thinking that, you know, some folks sit around and think, well, you know, it's only those folks over there, uh, and you know what they mean when they say those folks that get these food stamps. They don't want to work. You know, they, get, they make all these babies and they don't want to work. Well, I used to work for the state of Indiana. I used to work in the IOT, the Indiana Office of Technology. And obviously it's, it's pretty big when you're talking about a whole state, but the area that I worked in um, from an IT perspective was FSSA, a Family and Social Services Agency. My job uh, was to manage, maintain, maintenance the hardware, more specifically PC terminals, things of that nature, um, some applications, in every food stamp office from Illinois to, Indian, uh, to Ohio, food stamp offices. There, were, there are food stamp offices in every county in the state of Indiana. Some counties we know for certain those people don't live in. So there are people who helped get 45 in office in our rural areas and some of our smaller counties who will now have a harder time getting life-sustaining food because they're going to cut food stamps. They're going to cut SNAP. They're also cutting $87 billion to the National Institute of Health, uh, $45 billion cut to the State Department Operations, $28 billion cut to refugee programs. Bring us your tired, your poor, your huddled masses. Yeah, don't even worry about that one. Um, $18 billion cut for Centers uh, for D Disease Control and Prevention. And another $2 billion cut, cut for food safety and inspection. So not only are you going to get less food, the food that you might get could be tainted. Let's just think about that. <laughs> So I, they, I, I went online, you know me, I'm, I always go online, and as you, I don't know if you can see it or not, but I, I, get, I wanted to see the budget, like, broken down. I wanted to see, you know, um, we talk about what does it mean to cut SNAP? What does it mean to cut, you know, public broadcasting? What do those things mean? And I, they really, they, this is an itemized list that you can find online, and it's really interactive. And you can look and see how each section is broke down and what, pieces of the section are, are cut. And as I was going through the list, like, again, Social Security, they want to cut Social Security by uh, um, um, uh, 2%. But here's where the cuts really have impact, right? Um, they want to cut old age survivor's insurance. So if you and your spouse have been paying in, something happens to your spouse, you used to get, you were able to get your survivor's insurance because most of us are still living off of two incomes, right? Somebody dies, does that mean you have to give up your space? I mean, you paid into it. Um, disability insurance, that's being cut. <laughs> I mean, I mean, just, I mean, you're going to, you're going to cut disability for people who probably want to work but can't work. Ah. Then they want to, you know, limitations and administrative expenses. I don't know what that means. Um, but then you look at what they, I mean, they, I mean, I can go on and on about, you know, um, you know, health is going to get cut by 28.3%. Um, grants to Medicaid cut by 11%. Uh, uh, the biggest cut is the um, Centers for Disease Control Prevention. I told you that. They're going to cut that by 26.9%. I mean, uh, if you're not testing and understanding diseases, how can you treat them and thus keep health care costs down? Does that make any sense to anybody? Okay. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but they also want to, <clears throat> I think this one's kind of a slap in the face, um, Indian Health Services. So you, there's an attempt, the government attempted genocide on the Native Americans of this land, and they found ways to, to cut services for, unfortunately, the poorest um, 
uh, demographic among us? Yeah, I'm, I'm not feeling that one. But something else that they're going to cut, substance abuse and mental health services. They're going to cut that by 25%. And so we, just at face value, these cuts are like really scary. When you talk about Centers for Disease Control, but you also want to cut health care benefits. You want to cut Indian Health Services, but you're also cutting Medicaid. You want to cut, um, cut substance abuse uh, and mental health, but again, you want to repeal ACA. This is double dipping <laughs> on the cutting, baby. It's double dipping. <sighs> so they want to cut 24.6% from health research and training. So it's not just that they're cutting, it's what they're cutting. It's not just that they're cutting, right? They, they take, if, if, if the Senate sits down and comes up with a health care bill very similar to what the House passed, and they are able to get the 60 votes they need and they sign off on repealing um, the Affordable Care Act, and this budget sees the light of day, they're not even going to do, the, they're saying the federal government it's not even going to help you to help you prevent t you get from getting sick. They're not even going to like study diseases to to help them stay away from you. So forget about treating the disease when you get it. They're not going to know anything about the disease because they're going to cut the funding for the disease to understand it. I, okay, so I'm sorry. Food and safety inspection. This is going to be cut by 15%. The things that <laughs> impact your human body are the things that they want to cut, right? I mean, and it goes on and on and on. Of course, there's some cuts to urban, de uh, uh, urban development, economic development. You know, definitely want to, we obviously want to cut that because we don't want people to have an opportunity to live in great neighborhoods. Nope, don't want that. We don't want the federal government um, helping with that. Um, veteran benefits. They're going to cut that by 6.5%. I mean, I, hey, I thought when you, every time you see a president, they stand on some kind of aircraft carrier or helicopter or something uh, uh, talking about how great our, our armed services are. But as soon as they get an opportunity, once you've done your, your due diligence as an, a, a, a service member, they're going to cut your services as a veteran because now you are no longer a value. They're going to cut medical community care for veterans by 52.9%, about $99 billion. I just want to throw that out there. But, I mean, it goes on. I mean, it goes on and on and on. Um, so let's talk about education real quick. They're cutting 73.4% from school improvement. <laughs> so guess what? Vouchers are here to stay. If this, now, mind you, this budget has to get passed. It's not passed yet. It hasn't gone through the, the rigmaroles of getting it passed. But they're so dead set on cutting public education, they're willing to cut school improvement by 73.4%, uh, cut higher education by 41.6%, you know, federal grants that allow you to go to school, especially since you know, the, the, the cost of educating folks is going up and up and up, uh, secondary education, so, social services, all of these things. Now, of course, there's going to be an increase in national defense spending. I mean, you know, because we obviously need more ways to blow each other up or blow up other people or pretend like we're going to blow them up because we haven't actually used some of the weapons that we've been building. They probably don't work anymore. I don't know. I'm not, an, I'm not a military person, but uh, they're going to be adding a lot of money to make sure that we are beefed up from a military standpoint. But there were some other things, like military construction, uh, research and development for weaponry is going to go up, but research and development for disease control is going to go down. Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying. So, and, and you have to look deeper. Like, I mean, there's a lot of cuts in here that, you know, yeah, that hit close to home. And, 
you really wonder what what he's thinking. But what I what I realized when I started looking at what was being cut, it, the things that are being cut are services and things that um, our current administration probably never used, and therefore they have they see no value in them. They they it's almost like um, they've never needed anything, and since they never needed anything or needed any help, nobody else should need those things either. So they they're going to cut those things, but they're going to increase like. Um, money into to funds that are on Wall Street. Let me. I need to find one of those. I, I, I was astonished. Astonished. Um, oh wait. One thing that you should know about. Again, we talk about it again. Representation for indigent in civil cases is going to be cut by ninety eight point five percent. Yes. Yes. Um, so if you're poor and you need uh, legal help. Well, they got to find a way to put people in those private prisons anyway, so, you know. I'm being facetious. Shut the hell up. Um, but there are, I saw where there were a lot of funds, and I'm really trying to find one that um, speaks volumes. Like, um, the Federal Building Fund, it's going to be increased by 99%. This is a, now, I want you to be, be sure you hear what I'm saying to you. Federal Building Fund. This fund is not actually probably sitting somewhere idle in a lockbox. It is in somebody's bank collecting interest. So they're going to increase that. Um, they're also going to increase export, import, bank. They're going to increase that by 154.8%. So if you're in the export import business um, and, it, and, and you need to get some money for export import, you know, there's, there's an opportunity for you to uh, take advantage because they're going to increase funding for the export import bank. Did you guys even know there was a bank for export imports? I didn't. I, I tell you what, running for office has opened my mind up to so many different things and how. Uh, we are incredibly affected by what goes on. So, you know, it breaks down, and 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 I I, I also downloaded another. Um, I wanted to understand why they felt like they needed to cut these things, and they actually have explanations for a lot of of, of reasons why they want to cut stuff. You know, um, for example, neighborhood reinvestment corporation. Uh, the budget proposes to end federal support for the Neighborhood Reinvestment Corporation, commonly known as NeighborWorks, um, a, a statutorily chartered nonprofit that receives the vast majority of its funding from federal funds. A strong return on these funds has not been documented. So what they're saying is, okay, so they have these, or, these organizations, these are nonprofit organizations that, you know, go into neighborhoods to try to revitalize those neighborhoods. And because there's not, they, they don't see um, documented returns on investment. Well, check this out. The only way you're going to see documented returns on investment is if, they're, if, the, if the money that you invested grows. But see, we're talking about investing in neighborhoods. So that money that you're investing, you're spending on those neighborhoods. So that, that, that money may not grow, but the neighborhood improves. So, see, when I see things like, a strong return on these funds has not been documented. It indicates to me that the funds that are being used are not showing a profit. But if the neighborhoods are improving, that's the profit. Uh, let me read another one. Um, the Community Development Block Grant. The budget proposes to eliminate funding for the Community Development Block Grant program. This program is not well targeted to the poorest populations and has not demonstrated a measurable impact on communities. Huh? Well, then improve it. Why cut it? So it turns out, you know, a lot of, they're using essentially the same amount of money. You know, the, it's a $48 billion trillion budget that was around last year. They're using the exact same amount of money, but how that money is being used is shifting. So it is, it is, for some reason, our current administration feels like it is more advantageous 
to fund export-import banks and funds that are sitting in banks than to feed people and, uh, and help improve their neighborhoods. See, they got this thing backwards. See, the idea that, that government should be run like a business is a bad, bad notion, in my opinion. Why? Because there are certain things that are just not profitable. Certain things that, that the government is responsible for is not going to turn you a profit. And if you're looking at the, taking care of the welfare of your people from a profit standpoint, then something is wrong because now you're applying a dollar amount to individuals. Can you value, can you honestly put a value on my life? And I think it depends on who you ask. If you ask the, the people that actually listen to the show, they probably say, you know what, I'm, I'm going to give her a couple hundred thousand. That's what her life is valued. If you ask a Republican who uh, doesn't like my views or, or doesn't, uh, isn't appreciative of, of the way I see the world, they probably say, I ain't worth two nickels. If you ask my wife, depending on the day of the week, she might tell you I'm, I'm worth, I'm priceless. But what you have is an administration and a government right now that has basically said, with, with their budget, because the budget basically lets you know what their priorities are, Right? what the priorities are. And I've gone, I've talked about this budget before, but I need you to understand the importance of this budget because it will have, the same people who voted for this administration are the ones that are going to be most negatively impacted. And I'm okay with that. Well, not really, because I don't think anybody should be uh, negatively impacted by their government. <laughs> think about that. Negatively impacted by your government. That which you lean on for protection could negatively impact you. Golly. But this is the direction we're going in. You know, I, I, I do not make, you know, millions of billions of dollars, so I don't understand what it's like to pay the amount of taxes that wealthy folks pay. But here's the deal. Have you noticed that after wealthy folks pay their taxes, they're still wealthy? Have you ever noticed that? That the, the amount of taxes that they pay is in line with their income, just like we pay what is in line with our income. But, but most of these, most of the, everything that we're talking about right now is about giving tax breaks to people who can really afford to give a little bit more so that the rest of us, you know. So, you know, this is just the beginning. You know, none of this has been voted on. None of it has gone through Congress. Um, but if you can look at the budget and think that, if you look at the budget and you think, wow, this is terrible. This is not good for our community. It's not good for our state. And it's not good for our country. Then you need to go to INDEMS.org and join up for Resistance Summer. If you think that people should be able to get food for themselves and their families, then you need to join Resistance Summer. If you feel like children should have the opportunities to get the should have the opportunity to get the most quality education they possibly can, you need to join Resistance Summer. And if you notice, I didn't even talk about any of the social um, and and civil rights issues that go along with some of this other stuff. Because guess what? You know, black folks, black folks, black folks. Anytime. The whole of the country is negatively impacted. We are doubly negative, negatively impacted. So don't ask me or come to me and tell me that the state party is not interested in African Americans working because it, there's a shout out and I'm repeating it to get involved. You want to work with me on team action? Let's go. But anytime Trust, know, and believe if somebody in Kosciuszko County or Fayette County or one of our more, or Cass County is going to be negatively impacted by this budget, you can best trust, know, and believe Marion County, Lake County, Allen County, Monroe County. We're going to be even more negatively impacted. Join Resistance Summer. There's a reason for us to get involved. Turn left, doggone it. Turn left. Come on and get involved with this thing and let's make it happen. 
I haven't even talked about civil rights stuff and the civil rights implications because you know what? I can do that all day long. I can talk about gay rights all day long, but I want you to understand that today, for example, gas taxing went up. Gas tax in Indiana went up. Did you notice it? If you live uh, in Lake County or down in southern Indiana where they have more toll roads, that went up. The cost of living in Indiana just went up, and these things were voted on by a supermajority of Republicans in the House and the Senate. The House and the Senate in the state of Indiana can do whatever they want because there's not enough Democrats or opposition to counter it. So if you're, going, if you're struggling now to put gas in your car, you're definitely going to be struggling. And you can thank your supermajority because the Democrats actually had a plan that wouldn't include increasing the gas tax. Get that? Democrats didn't want to raise taxes, but Republicans did? Come on, don't believe the hype. Resistance Summer, get involved. If you want more information about how to get involved or what it entails, reach out to me. And if you have, if the, if you have a vision and you have seen some errors over the last couple of years, feel free to bring those to me because I'll be more than happy to listen. But I also need you to bring solutions. I need you to bring solutions. I need you to help me figure out, help us figure out how can we, can we, we can solve these things. Because sitting around complaining about it ain't going to do shit. I'm sorry. Oops. Sorry. It ain't. I know when I was, the same thing when I was 307 pounds. And, oh, my God, I did everything I could. I, at least I thought I did. Because if I'd done everything I could, then I wouldn't have still been 307 pounds. Food was a struggle for me. It still is a struggle for me. I know I struggle with food. But when, once I realized that my health was in jeopardy, I did what I had to do, and I went on ahead and I went under the knife. I took the criticism because, you know, obviously trying to get healthy by any means necessary was a bad thing for people who feel like I could have lost the weight on my own. No, it didn't work for me. I got the help that I needed. I could have been sitting around on my sofa right now at 350 complaining about how fat I am and how my blood pressure is through the roof and how my cholesterol levels were high. But I didn't want to do that anymore. I wanted to make a change, so I got up and I did the necessary research. I found out, found out what I needed to do to get my surgery. I, I, you know, one last thing. This, this gives you an, an indication of how I think about things. My family, I'm excited, is coming up this weekend. Um, this is a busy, busy weekend. My family from Mississippi and Cleveland are coming in town. It doesn't happen very often, so I'm super excited that they're coming in town this weekend. And I'm, I'll be out of pocket, so if I don't return any phone calls or answer any emails, my family is here. That I haven't, uh, they've been up, you know, briefly, but the last time most of them came up was for my mom's funeral back in 2001, and that's how long ago it's been. But, but whenever, when my mom was down in Mississippi, so I'm excited about seeing them, shout out to my peeps. Um, when my mom was down in Mississippi taking care of my grandmother, my uncle and my auntie's house burnt down to the ground. It burnt down. They, it caught on fire. Um, the only thing that was left were the bricks. And my mother was like, okay, fire da out, let's get to work. She didn't sit around and go, well, how did the fire happen? Well, how many rooms burn up? Why didn't the firefighters put it out? Well, why didn't they do this? Why? My mother said, let's get these clothes washed so y'all have some clothes to wear since, you know, it's going to cost a lot of money to buy a whole new wardrobe. And my cousins will tell you, I wasn't even there, my cousins will tell you how, you know, valiant my mother worked to make sure that they had clothes on their back just so they could survive. So we can sit around and talk about, you know, yes, 2016, there was a fire. Turn some people orange. There was a fire. <laughs> Democrats, we got our asses handed to us. And there were a lot of reasons why. But my question to you is now, are you going to join Resistance Summer? Are you going to get involved? Are you going to join Team Action? Are you going to be the voice of change? Are you going to be a, a candidate to run for office? Are you going to work and knock on doors to make sure people are registered to vote? Are you going to do any of those things? Because if we do these things together, and listen, 
I don't expect all Democrats to get along. I know some very good Democrats that aren't big fans of LGBT folks. I know very good Democrats who are pro, uh, pro life and uh, don't believe in abortions. I know good Democrats, who, you know, who don't believe in unions. We're not going to all agree on the same thing. I get that. But the bottom line is we all want clean air, access to food, and quality education for our kids. And if you're down with any of those things, I hope to see my messenger blow the heck up. John Zodi needs to come to me and say, Dana, why did you do that? I can't handle all the volunteers I got coming. Councilman Crooms, I know up in Madison County you could use some volunteers to get out the vote and get out the message. My folks up in Lake County, I know you can. Porter County, St. Joe, I know you can. This is a statewide initiative. Grant County, Clark County down south, Vandenberg, I know you can use some help. Get people motivated. Let's get involved. Indiana's own. I, I, this was an interesting show because I'm not even sure. That, <laughs> a lot of stuff going on. A lot of stuff going on. Indiana Zone, turn left, reach out to me. Let's make some changes in 2017, 2018. Let's move on. 2016 is gone. We can't go back. Then let's, but we have the tools necessary now to move forward. I'm down. You down? Turn left. Indiana Zone, I will catch you guys next week. Enjoy, enjoy the sunshine. I love you guys. Chat later. Bye-bye.